Hey everyone, as I suspect you may have heard, we are going into what will be the 32nd ever DEF CON this summer, and we are going into it at what is going to be our, depends on how you count, like 14th or 15th venue over the years. Yeah, um, this, is, uh, this is another time that DEF CON is not going to be where it's supposed to be. DEF CON is cancelled, but then it's uncancelled. Uh, as you may know, I've been going since DEF CON 8 to the world's largest hacker convention, and I can remember many different places. I was actually just talking about it with Grifter, how back kind of in the, the latter half of the aughts, right, we were at the Riviera. What's old is new again, because DEF CON this summer will be at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Yep, up on the north side, basically, as, as he put it, like almost on the same patch of dirt as we were 20 years ago. There's a lot of changes to this. There's a number of you who might have some questions. I did a video last year about things you might not know before you go to DEF CON. This is the 2024 version of that, especially when it comes to where to stay. Indeed, the Las Vegas Convention Center. What is it? Where is it? Well, the main thing I want you to understand, if you take nothing else away from this video, it is not one building. Uh, the Las Vegas Convention Center is a series of interconnected buildings, right? There's the Central Hall, but that is bordered by the North Hall and the South Hall. There is even, uh, kind of across Paradise, there's the West Hall. Uh, that, is, that is where we will be for DEF CON. The East Hall, uh, the East Hall is located right next to Las Vegas Airport's Terminal 2. Uh, it also has a pool on the roof, which is to say, that does not exist. So, yes, if anyone tells you there's a famous Flipper Zero giveaway slash free whiskey tasting slash handjob contest or something happening at the East Hall at the Las Vegas Convention Center, don't believe them. There is no such building. But the West Hall, the West Hall is what has been secured for DEF CON this summer. Yeah, this is a massive space, right? So that's good and bad. It's a double-edged sword. Uh, on the plus side of the equation is the fact that everything at DEF CON can finally be under one roof again. We haven't had that since, what, the Rio, I guess? That's, that's going back a minute. Uh, what are the cons? Well, the, the, the downsides are the fact that this is not a hotel, right? This is, it's not even near a hotel. I mean, we were at the Caesars Forums for a couple of years now. At least that had the link kind of connected to it. And if you saw my video last year, there's a lot of hotels around it. The Las Vegas Convention Center is not a hotel at all and it's kind of in a barren area. Now, there's a lot of stuff there. there. There are hotels in the neighborhood, but I want to kind of tease that apart and help you break down the idea of the scale of some of the space you might be walking. You're like, oh, I booked a room at this spot. It's, uh, it's, it's right near the uh, convention center. There's right near, and then there's right near. And if you don't want to be walking for like half an hour every day outside in the sweltering, oppressive Vegas sun and heat, listen to what I got to tell you. Lodging, lodging for DEF CON this summer. Where are people going to stay? Uh, if you already have a room that you booked, like well in advance because you thought ahead, good job. You might be freaking out right now. Don't worry, we'll get to you. If you haven't yet booked a room, let's, let's look at that map again, right? First of all, if you're a Bonboy member, great. You can rock out. There are Marriott properties galore. What is the single best place? The Marriott itself, the Las Vegas Marriott, in my opinion. Now, it's expensive. It's a very nice hotel. The Las Vegas Convention Center's West Hall has two entrances, basically. The northern lobby and the southern lobby. The, the northern lobby isn't on the north side of the building. It's kind of on the west side of the building. But the southern lobby is right there. Like, if you want to be outside the least amount possible, go ahead and stay at the Marriott. You will walk across the street. You'll walk right in the building every day. There are other Marriott Bonvoy properties, though. So you've got the Courtyard and the Residence Inn. These are two properties right next to each other. They're a very short walk. Now, another one is the Renaissance. <laughs> don't, get, don't get confused here. The Renaissance is a different hotel than the Residence Inn. Still a Marriott property, but the Renaissance is further south. It's still walkable, but again, I don't want you to mix up those names. You might also see the Little Spring Hill Suites, right? 
So you say, oh, look at that. The Spring Hill Suites, like, boy, that's really in the thick of it. That's terrific. Not so fast. I'll explain why. Maybe you used to stay at the Link for DEF CON in previous years, and you want, like, big bars, big casino action. The Westgate's got you covered. The Westgate is pretty much right there. Uh, they're not affiliated with, you know, Hilton Properties or MGM Properties or anything like that. Uh, they're not a Marriott property, but it is right there. Don't think it's a simple walk, however. This is what I mean when you say the map can be deceiving. The Las Vegas Convention Center's West Hall only has those two entrances, the Northern Lobby, which is kind of near Elvis Presley Boulevard, and the Southern Lobby, which is on Convention Center Drive. That's the one that faces the Marriott. The whole eastern side of this structure, all along Paradise Road, and basically the whole northern side of this structure, all along Elvis Presley, those are utility corridors. Those are loading docks. You're not getting in that way. It's all fences and gates. I mean, most people aren't getting in that way. You're hackers, right? You might social engineer your way somehow, but walk through the back of the house or something. But it's, it's not a viable way to come and go every day. So that Spring Hill Suites or like that Westgate side of things, like be aware, you're, you're still walking around some of the building. Now, along the large western side of the Las Vegas Convention Center's west building, there's tons of parking. It's what they call the diamond lot, if you see this map here. Uh, that's an option, like if you're going to just park your car and walk up, there's a whole bunch of different parking. Don't, don't get confused again, because again, you may be really spread out. I'll tell you though, in this parking lot, <laughs> Something I'm going to tell you more about in an upcoming video are the Siegel Select Rooms. I think that's what they call this place, the Siegel Select Building. I'll be honest, this, this is either a great option or a dodgy option. It literally is sub $100 a night lodging with like amenities, allegedly, like kitchenettes, uh, like kind of little like single studio suites. It seems to cater to longer term guests. They have weekly rates. I think they even have monthly rates. That's not always a recipe for the most high echelon behavior, we will say, at a Vegas lodging establishment. Like, it might be a little bit dodgy around there. If you want me to, I'm, well, next time I'm, I'm in town all the time, I might head over there and try to take a poke at it. Maybe I'll even spend the night in the Seagull Select and tell you about it. Now, there has been talk I've seen from some folk about the Resorts World's property. Uh, that is, if you're a Hilton member, that's an option for you. There's also, you know, the Hilton Grand Vacations, I believe. Those are all on the other side of the Strip, though. And you say, God, why, why on earth would anyone go all the way the heck out there? Like, that's such a, that's such a haul. Well, I know that it's across the Strip, but the Strip isn't some sort of impenetrable barrier like it is. If, you, if you've been down by, like, Center Strip, you know, of all the fences and the overhead walkways and how you can't just walk across the Strip down, like, on the Flamingo, like, something like that. Uh, the north end of the Strip is not like that. I mean, you, you can walk across it. It's not the worst thing in the world. There's crosswalks. It's still a distance. So why is anyone talking about, like, the, uh, the sort of Resorts World's property? Well, remember, the Resorts World has a, quote, loop station. Remember, you know, the loop? That's, that's Elon Musk's stupid Tesla sewer thing that he sapped the taxpayers of Nevada, like, freaking $50 million to build this worthless piece of shit. And it's... <laughs> Yeah, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's it's around. You can look look up Las Vegas Loop. It's been garnering, uh, we'll call it, pointed feedback from the usually sympathetic automotive media, but it's there. Uh, it's mostly a system to connect different buildings of the Las Vegas Convention Center. If you know you really want to go down into the depths of nowhere and ride in cars for a few minutes for some reason, it's it's, it's a dumb idea in my opinion, but. It does allegedly connect to Resorts World. I don't know what hours the loop operates. I don't know if they'll have extended hours or not. Uh, their regular daytime hours right now in the off season are not great, but it's, it's a plan. It's a possible plan. So that is over there. And there's also, you see it on the map here, there's the Circus Circus. If you want to go on the east side of the strip, save yourself some money. I have stayed there. I've stayed most places in Vegas at this point. I have stayed at the Circus Circus. It's not great but you know what it's cheap and it's not like a, a hellhole or something like it's got they've renovated a little bit over the years it has an incredible steakhouse it even has a very very cost effective uh, series of buffets and food options and stuff too so maybe you want to walk along elvis presley boulevard all the way to the strip and cross over if that's where you want to be that's where you want to be again i mentioned hilton grand vacations is up there i mean you folk know how to use search engines right you can see what kind of hotels are around what kind of options you got but again, don't be fooled at how spread out the city is. 
uh, walking along streets in Vegas in the summer looks like, oh, it's just, just around the corner. It's the next property over. That can be a half hour walk sometimes. And it is brutal. The climate is hot. If you do walk up and down the strip, you know, there's some things up that way. Some of the old heads from DEF CON will remember back when we were at the Riv, right? The Pepper Mill, the Pepper Mill Diner. Another one, if you're bold enough to brave the heat and walk all the way out that way, uh, it's not to be missed. So let's say you already do have room somewhere kind of down at like center strip where you thought the con was going to be. Um, like you can cancel them, right? DEF CON still oodles and oodles of days away. You should be able to cancel your room in most hotels. By the way, you know this trick, right? Let's say you have travel plans and you're going to check into some Hilton hotel next weekend, but like your, your plans change and you call them up and you say, hey, I don't need this room anymore. Can I please cancel? And they say, oh, I'm sorry, you're within 72 hours of your estimated check-in. There's going to be a penalty. Um, you know you don't have to pay the penalty, right? Because what you do is you call the hotel's reservation department. It's usually some corporate line. And you say, hey, my travel plans have changed. Uh, instead of checking in this weekend, my work meeting has been moved to November. It's like months away. They will move your reservation to months away. Then you call the hotel back. And you say, hello, yes, I am uh, Mr. Business Important Person, and my reservation number is blah. And they look it up, and they say, oh, yes, you'll be staying with us in November, I see. And you say, yes, but um, you know what? I think I'm not going to do that this year, and it's very far away, so just to be safe, I don't want to incur any penalties, let's cancel that reservation for late, 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 late this year. And they'll say, yes, we can easily do that. That works 90% of the time. So let's say you can't cancel it. Well, you don't want to cancel it. Let's say you have a room at the Paris or the, I can't call it the, the, the horseshoe, it's the bally's in my mind, but the, the horseshoe, or you maybe you down at the link, right? Because that's where you thought everyone from DEF CON goes. Well, the monorail works. Let's put the monorail on this map here. The monorail is unlike the stupid car sewer. The monorail actually goes places you want to be. The monorail has a station up at the Westgate, uh, just a little below that, right near the convention center, near the residence inn and the courtyard. There's a station with a silly name called the Boingo Station. But yeah, you can catch that. The monorail's great. It'll run you straight down to the link. There's a, there's a stop there at the High Roller. There's a stop at Flamingo. Let's say uh, maybe you're playing in the poker tournament, right? My wife, Tara, she runs the DEF CON poker tournament every year. It's a charity benefit for EFF. They have, you know, a good relationship with the poker room at the Horseshoe. So you don't have to, like, get a lift ride or something all the way down there or, God forbid, walk. Take the monorail, quick hit, bang, jump right off at the Bally's Paris station, you're good. So you got options there, right? The monorail does have operating hours, but they're great. I think they only close between like 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., something like that. It's, it runs pretty much all night. And as mentioned, maybe you're just a car person and there, there are loads of parking lots. There, you want the diamond lot, maybe you're staying somewhere else in town. Maybe you're staying at you know a friend's house or an Airbnb. No, I will not be staying at the famous pink house. Uh, not, not during DEF CON and Black Hat. I like to stay right on premises. But yeah, if you got an Airbnb, a VRBO or something like that, park, park your car, get your rental, do what, you, do what you need to do. There's ways to get around and there's no shortage of parking at the Las Vegas Convention Center. That's about the size of it. Hopefully this rundown is helpful to you, depending on where you think you're staying, what you think you're doing. I will, of course, be staying out there for weeks this summer. I'm, I'm always out there for both Black Hat and DEF CON. So, uh, yeah, speaking of that, shouts out to Black Hat. Uh, you might not know the full, you know, scope of, like, how rough this is, these, these canceled plans that DEF CON was facing. The fact that Caesars dropped DEF CON like this without a lot of warning is highly unprofessional. Black Hat has been instrumental in supporting DEF CON. Now, they used to be the same entity, right? 20 years ago, that changed. Jeff, Jeff sold off Black Hat separately. And they're still closely linked. They still help each other out. When Caesars dropped the ball like this, it was a lot of pull from, from Black Hat. Black Hat used to be at the Caesars, remember? That was, that was ages ago, about a decade prior is when Black Hat moved over to the Mandalay Bay. And you might have been thinking, I was thinking, like, man, they have this great relationship with the Mandalay, the MGM properties. Why not move DEF CON to the, the Sands Expo Center? If you're not familiar, the Sands Expo Center is where SHOT Show is. If you go to something like ISC West this spring, big physical security trade show, I'll be there. That's, you know, that's the other big convention center in town that isn't the humongous Las Vegas Convention Center. My guess is the dates just were not available. Honestly, I am floored that the dates were available at all, even at the LVCC. Black Hat played a role in that, right? So Informa, I mean, Informa cast a big shadow. They, throw, they have a lot of weight they could throw around in this town. And it's, it is my understanding 
that they pulled some strings and we're very, very grateful. So this summer when you're giving like high fives and hugs and fist bumps or whatever to, you know, Dark Tangent or to Nikita or to Grifter or to Shirelle, you're, you're all the DEF CON goons, right? Like that's a huge part of how we're all together every year, but don't sleep on people like Cody and Tiffany and Edwin and everyone else at Informa who I'm sure has been on a number of phone calls the past few weeks when this news was being managed. Uh, they, they deserve your thanks and your praise too. So yeah, I don't know if you attend Black Hat, but pour, pour one out for everyone from Jeff on down who was losing some serious sleep these last few weeks and able to deliver news to you that was, hey, DEF CON was canceled, but no, it's not. There's a lot of people that work really hard to make DEF CON work every summer. All the people who give talks, all the people who run villages, I am proud to be just a very little part of DEF CON every year. I hope you can be a part of it too. I hope you come out if it's your first time. Yeah, I will link that DEF CON advice video at the end of this with a little index card thinger. And if it's, you know, your 19th time, your 30th time, who knows? Still, 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 still come out and say hi. Come find me, come find other people. Or find yourself some sleep in one of those aforementioned hotels. Be okay. Look out for each other. We'll all get through this. Whoever you are, whatever you do, if I see you this summer or somewhere before, stay safe out there. Well, that was pretty fun, wasn't it? Hopefully the advice was useful in that. I wish I could end it with a fun note, but I want to mention something just because it's... Let's mention it. Let's get it out of the way so I don't have to say this a billion times. I've already said this a number of times to people who've talked to me today. You've probably seen in videos with Tara and I that we have two little black voids that run around the house. We have Frankie, Fangs, and Whisper. And yeah, they pop up a lot there in tweets and posts and Instagram videos and uh, jumping, in, jumping in frame when I'm mixing drinks behind the bar. And this morning at a very early hour with no warning and mercifully no pain and uh, yeah, no real, no real reason other than life can be life. Um, Frankie Fangs learned the answer to the great mystery, so he just kind of laid down, and right there, and Tara was right with him and didn't know what was wrong, and of course we were both a mess, and we did some rescue breaths and we checked him out, and uh, that was that. That was just it. So he probably had a stroke, we think, based on uh, blown pupils. But if you have loved ones, if you have loved ones with or without fur, hold them close and give them a kiss for me. And you don't have to send all kind of sympathies to, to us. I mean, I'm sure those of you who see us, I'm, we're, we've been getting messages from a few people. Word, word spreads around a little bit. Frankie, Frankie had a following on the internet. He sure did. In lieu of any gifts or anything like that, of course, uh, we, don't, we don't need anything. Um, the cats have a wonderful life. They didn't, and they wanted for nothing. But if you feel so inclined, please feel free to make a donation to your local Humane Society uh, in honor of Frankie Fangs. Yeah. More happy news in the future, more things. Uh, you can scroll through my Instagram if you want old photos of him or Tara's where some of the very first videos of Frankie ever coming home 10 years ago. Thanks for listening. Thanks for looking out for each other.